Louisiana Motion to show our car museum is home to the oldest continuously operated suburban trolley line in the United States. And the museum is registered as a National Historic District. The Brantford Electric Light and Power opened on July 31st, 1900, connecting the city of New Haven with the shoreline, creating the first commuter rail line in the state. 100 years ago, in 1922, the trolley system was in its peak in Connecticut. With over 780 miles of track, a commuter could reach any major city and suburb within the state. In 1922, Warren G. Harding was president. The first home game was played at the original Yankee Stadium. King Tut's tomb was uncovered. Warner Brothers was established. And the first issue of Time Magazine was published. The average weekly income was $37. The cost of a new car was $310. And the price of gas was $0.25 cents a gallon. Our parade will be starting now and will showcase the best of the best, highlighting the incredible volunteer restoration and curatorial work done here at the museum. We want to take this opportunity to welcome you back. Our visitors, donors, and members, your support means the world to us. The Shoreline Trolley Museum would also like to express that thanks to the Museum in Motion Committee, co chair of Rob Harris and Dennis Zoe, and the program's committee members, Marcia Adam, and Derek Geist. Amy Kanzler and Mike Hildreth. Our ground crew and passenger trolley operators they are John and Joyce Aurelius, Walter Baker, Bob DeCorte, Phyllis DeCorte, Bill Dawkins, Bob Grace, Walter Fogarty, Charles Goodman, Dennis Hoyt, Mike Kelly, Dennis Lacavilla, and Michelle Lacavilla, Mark Lipkin, Lou Levinson, Alicia Mello, Nathan Neary, Tony Pagali, John Cordo, Al Santini, Andy Serio, Mark Sullivan, Kathy Slinsky, Ethan Zemiaski, and Doris Alazo. If you would like information about opportunities, special events, or private charters at the Shoreline Trial Museum, visit the information table at the Big White Tent. Also, make sure you stay hydrated today as it's very warm as at our concession stand often. If you have any questions, our volunteers who are in the bright yellow land here will be happy to help. And how long are we going to wait for the parade is starting? Our first car is car 61, operated by volunteer Christopher Mitchell. Rhode Island Company's car 61 is the oldest surviving street railway vehicle built as an electric car. Built by the J.M. Jones Company in 1893, car 61 originally had open platforms until 1907 when end platforms were modified and enclosed. After the First World War, these older single truck cars were converted to work cars, and car 61 was renumbered to car number 1567. The car had its seats removed and was repurposed to carry sand from a sand pit to various car barns. The car remained in use until Providence Trial Car Operations ended on May 13, 1948. In 1978, the car was repainted and renumbered back to 61. Although much of the interior has been lost in time, reasons must be done in an attempt to recreate the car's original interior appearance. Car number 61 is 29 feet long, weighs 22,000 pounds, or 11 tons, and it's considered a passenger. Oh, 
operated by volunteers James Moore and Tim Green. The car 1706 was built by the Toronto Railway Company in 1912 for the Toronto Railway Company. The car was considered a half convertible, where one side of the car had panels that could be removed for summer service. The car had a gold stove for heating during winter months. The car was built in the in 1925 and it was converted into a rail grinder for a delicious block that was mounted on the side of the truck train between the wheels to see the service of the rail. Car 1706 is 34 feet long, weighs 30,600 pounds or 15 tons. Operated by volunteer George Papaga, Connecticut Company, Car 1911, was built by the J.G. Brill Company of Philadelphia in 1919 with a steel undercarriage and side plates, but with only wooden window posts. Cars like this were used by the Florida Dollar Line throughout the state, and many remained in the service until the last day of streetcar demand in September 1948. On March 8, 1947, at approximately 12.45 a.m., Sister car in 1901 was the last trolley car to run in New Haven. One year later, Sister car in 1902 was the last trolley car to run in New Haven, ending nearly eight years of street railway service in the city. Both cars in 1901 and 1902 were strapped. Car 1911 is 49 feet long, weighs 49,000 pounds, or 24.5 tons, and seats 44 passengers. Operated by volunteer Paul Flora, Connecticut Company 2350 is an example of a Nordic type safety car. Built in 1922 by the Oswald Bradley Car Company of Worcester, Mass., the car ran in Middletown until 1930. It was then transferred to New Haven, where it was used on several light and travel lines. Due to automobile competition, street railways became passenger and revenue. In response to a small light car was designed with improved smaller motors and a controller to the box with brakes to start the car in the event of the impact of the motor. The safety car was supposed to generate savings because it used less power and was operated by one person. Car 2350 is 28 feet long, weighs 16,300 pounds or 8.15 tons, and seats 32 passengers. by volunteer Peter Callahan, car 500, the parlor car of the Connecticut Company, was built by the J.G. Drill Company in Philadelphia in 1904. It was built with open platforms at each end and was working with the ladder and rail work. The ends were closed and the car was connected until about 1910. The car has eight-way open door work, bell head mirrors, basically scroll work, and plate glass windows. Well, the project, which is here, the application of concentration found in the Canada Laboratory State Glass Windows, combined to make this one of the most popular vehicles to break steel rails. Each year, car 500 carried Connecticut Company officials on an extended 720-mile inspection trip over Connecticut's entire trolley system. Car 500 is 42 feet long, weighs 37,830 pounds, 4,18 tons, and seats 20 passengers. Operated by volunteer Gary Zuckerman, car 4573 was the museum's first replica car representing the largest trolley system in the United States. It is a four-motor convertible running in a summer configuration here at the Oak Trolley Museum. Rails would come off the car and would be replaced with the old panels for the old weather operation. Built by the Lucroy Car Company in 1906, it started in the service of the Latin Academy and ran into the next year in four. In 1947, the car was selected by Grant Burton. It was rare and well-deserved as an example of this car. Car 4573 is 40 feet long, weighs 48,500 pounds, 4.4 half tons, and seats 44 passengers. 
operated by volunteers Jeff Hacker and James Lady. Part 1001, New York Place City Fuels Car Company, was a worker in the This revolutionary PCC for President's Company in the car was the traction in which we had answered to the growing automobile and bus trips to replace the use of the traditional cars around the United States. Part 1001 was the first production of the PCC car. Matt Ford as the owner and father of the and Steve Rudolph as the governors. Chicago North Shore and Milwaukee Car 709 was built in 1924 by Cincinnati Car Company. Into the road, the was running on a private right of way to safely operate at much higher speeds than the street cars. As he had to miles an hour, the car is equipped with a capacity of water cooler, fully operated with a rest of
with us. We got a little bit. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to this channel.